So let's start by uh, defining and understanding some terms, some important terms in thermodynamics. So, so from time to time, you're going to come across terms like system, surroundings, and, and state of the system, state functions, and energy, and mass transfer, and, and, and so on. So what we mean by system in thermodynamics, it's, it's, a, it's a part of the universe, part of the universe that's being studied that is being studied and everything else except the system in the universe is called surroundings. So everything around the system, surroundings, everything else in the universe, everything else in the universe. So together system and surroundings, systems plus surroundings make up the universe. So now you might ask what exactly is the system and you can define the system however you like. It's completely up to you. So you can define the walls and the boundaries that exist between the system and the surroundings. And you can say this is the region I specify as the system and everything around it, everything apart from it in the universe is the surroundings. So let's say you just take a simple example. It could be you can define as a system as a simple test tube. Uh, with some chemicals in it. So, so this is your system and you define your walls and boundaries and everything outside is your surroundings. So you get the idea. So now a system in, in thermodynamics can be of three types. You can have either an open system, open system, a closed system or an isolated system. So when you say open system, let's say you just consider a simple example of, of a saucepan with, with some soup in it that's boiling and it's kept on a stove. You've defined your system as this saucepan with soup in it and everything around it is the surroundings including the stove, the, the air around it and everything else in apart from the saucepan with soup is the surroundings. But the, the only thing here is the saucepan is actually open to the surroundings and, and the reason it is called an open system is because it allows for free exchange of both energy and mass transfer to occur with the surroundings. So what we mean by that is, as you can see, as the soup is boiling, water is escaping from the saucepan as, as steam. So you can clearly see that there is some mass transfer or there's some matter transferring between the system and the surroundings. And then you uh, also, uh, you can also add, let's say you can add some spices to it, some salt and some pepper or some other spices to it. So there is clearly, you can actually put in some mass into the system. So it is allowing for mass coming from the surroundings into the system. So the, the, the mass transfer part of it is very clear. The ma matter transfer between system and surroundings is very clear. It is easy to understand. So coming to the energy transfer, it's a little more tricky to visualize how energy exchange is happening. So you bring the saucepan close to the heat source. Obviously, that is how the soup is boiling. So, so the energy is, transfer, is being transferred from the stove to the contents in the saucepan. And the, the, the way it is doing it is the air around here is really hot that which means the molecules of air molecules here are jiggling really fast or they they're constantly bombarding with the atoms in the body of the saucepan and then these atoms in the saucepan in the solid state are again vibrating really fast because of the energy that the kinetic energy that they've acquired from the air around the saucepan and then they transfer they in turn transfer some of their kinetic energy to the the, the soup the atoms and molecules in the soup and that's how the soup gets hotter and hotter and then it starts to boil. So, so you, so you have effectively what you've done here is transferred the heat energy from the stove to the contents in the soup. So, the, the there is a clear energy transfer, heat energy transfer from the surroundings to the to the system. So now, uh, similarly, when the steam here is escaping from the saucepan into the surroundings, steam is also really hot. So, it is actually taking some heat energy from the system to the surroundings. So you can also transfer some energy from the surroundings to the system by swing, doing some mechanical work on the system. Let's say you, you put in a stirrer or a ladle 
and and you you basically stirring this back and forth the stir, stirring the soup back and forth so you're doing some mechanical work and as a result you're imparting some energy to the contents of the system or basically you are able to achieve this energy exchange between the system and the surroundings by virtue of either heat or by virtue of doing some work on the system so schematically if you just want to um, draw a, an open system let's say this is your system and it is open so you are letting energy and matter, energy and matter freely go into the system. So, all, so everything around the system is surroundings and you are also letting energy and matter to go out of the system into the surroundings, matter and energy. So there is a free exchange of both here. So now coming to the closed system. So now I can make this saucepan a closed system by just putting a lid on top of it, right? It's that simple as that. So you're not letting the uh, you're not letting the steam come out of the out of the saucepan. So here, what's happening is there is a free exchange of energy. There's exchange of energy between the uh, system and the surroundings, but there is no exchange of matter or there's no mass transfer. You're not you're not able to add spices to the soup. You're not letting the steam come out of the saucepan. All you are able to do is transfer the heat transfer the energy by virtue of heat from the stove into the saucepan and then the saucepan can itself become hot and then you know the air around it is becoming hot as well and so that's how it is transferring some amount of its heat energy to the surround back to the surroundings so there is an exchange of energy but there's no exchange of matter so if you see here a closed system so you have energy coming in some energy going out but there's no exchange of uh, mass or matter so now coming to the third type of the system which is an isolated system so in this let's say you have a, the example for a, a, very, a very classic example for an isolated system would be a thermos thermos flask so let's say you have a see if I can just draw a quick schematic so let's say this is a thermos flask and as you know thermos flask generally is used to keep the contents inside the flask whatever you're having it's, it could be a coffee or it could be something cold and you want to keep the the contents either cold or hot for a long period of time then you use a thermos flask and what is happening here is obviously it's not letting any content can go in and uh, go in and out there's no mass transfer happening there's no matter transfer between the system and the surroundings but there's also no energy transfer uh, at least that's what we hope there's no energy transfer between the system and the surroundings of course this is not an ideal isolated system because even in, th in a thermos flask you're going to there will be some amount of energy transfer that's why your hot coffee is going to become cold after you know after say a day or so and and similarly cold things can become come back to room temperature so so this will happen over time so this is not an ideal isolated system and in fact it is really rare to find you know truly isolated systems in this world um, because it, there is always some amount of leak of energy between the system and the surroundings so anyway this this sort of this example comes sort of close to you know what we mean by an isolated system so there is no there is no um, exchange of matter or energy so we'll talk about another important term that keeps coming up in thermodynamics that is the state of the system and the state function in the next video.